Hello and welcome to another tutorial. This is the second part of the Blender Basics series. In this video, I'll be talking about modeling. Let's first talk about what modeling is. Modeling is a technique that is used to create and or manipulate meshes in order to create things like props, environments, characters. Modeling is typically needed and used for things like product design, uh, marketing content, any sort of video games, whether that be mobile, VR, consoles, PC. It can also be used for animations and movies or any type of videos. It can also be used for stuff like 3D printing. There are also different types of modeling. To name a few, there's box modeling, procedural modeling, boolean modeling, uh, modular modeling. The type of modeling I'm going to show you today is going to be box modeling. The way box modeling works is that you take a low poly shape to create your object or prop or whatever you're trying to make and you control the faces, edges, edges and vertices in order to create our desired shape so we're going to use different tools these include things like loop carts, beveling using different modifiers uh, extruding you guys also have to remember that modeling is a skill and with every skill it's going to take time and practice and as we are trying to make montages very quickly, I'm going to show you guys some other resources that you can use to assist you in creating your scene. Okay, so I have just opened up Blender. We are going to get straight into the modeling. A quick note, I have all my keys I'm going to press down here. We also have a modeling tab up here. Now you can do your modeling in the viewport tab or you can choose to do it in the modeling tab. It doesn't really matter. Um, the only difference is the layout is slightly different and it's already put us into editing mode. So I'm gonna stick in the viewport. Now the first thing we're going to learn about is different modes. If we come up to the top left hand side of the screen, we have a lot of different modes here. We have object mode, edit mode, sculpt mode, vertex paint, white paint and texture paint. The one that we are interested in is called edit mode. This is going to allow us to move faces, edges and vertices. Give that a click. And as you can see, if we look at our cube, we have vertices, edges, and faces selected. If you do not have this selected, one thing you should check is to go back into object mode and to make sure your cube is selected. You can then tap back into edit mode and everything in your cube should be selected. So let's explain a few things. I'm going to click off the cube. And let's just have a look what we have. So these little dots here, these are called vertices. They can then be linked with edges, which are these lines. And once you have vertices and edges linked, you can then create a face, which is what you see here, the white section. You can also split this up into different modes. So for example, if we look in the top left, we have something called vertex select. This is going to allow you to select the vertices that create your mesh. Again, you can select multiple vertices. If you notice, however, you cannot select the edges or the faces. 
Next, we can go up into edge select mode. And as you can see, our vertices have disappeared. However, now we can select the edges of our cube. Again, you can hold down left click and drag to select multiple edges. This is also true for the face select mode, where we can select individual or multiple faces. If we go back to vertex mode, you can see how each vertice, edge or face can be moved or manipulated and how it's going to affect the rest of our vertices, edges and faces. For example, if we select these two vertices here, we can click G to grab, which will allow us to move. And you can move these vertices however you want. For example, let's click G and Z, and I'm going to raise these up. By moving these vertices, you can see that it has extended our edges, and it's also elongated this front face. It has also elongated this back face and elongated our edges. By moving, scaling, and rotating our vertices, edges, and faces, we can manipulate the mesh into the shape that we want. What I recommend is you have a little play around how you can manipulate the vertices, edges, and faces, and the different transformations that you can do as we covered in the previous video. I'm now going to use tab, which is the shortcut key to switch back to object mode. And I'm going to delete this object, shift A to go to add. And I'm going to add a default cube back in. Something that you'll end up using a lot is the punctuation key. By clicking this key, it's going to enable us to look at different views. So by clicking eight or by using your mouse to click on each button, it's going to switch us to different views. So this will switch us to the top view where we can see the top of our cube. We can also do this for the right side, the back side, bottom side, etc. The reason why we want to use these views is to make sure things are in proportion from every single angle. Another reason to use this is to make sure that our mesh is symmetrical when desired. Something that I want to highlight quickly is that if you look at our cube and we go to vertex mode, it has four vertex per face. Now, of course, being a cube, this is the nature of it. However, when we are modeling, this is our aim. We want to always try and have four vertex per face. You might be thinking, why? To put it simply, Blender loves having four vertex per face. If you do not have four vertices per face, you run the risk of getting shading errors. This can look like different things. For example, the light may bounce in really weird ways and it, it just doesn't look clean or natural. It can also appear on the mesh where you'll get weird black spots, random bits of mesh sticking out everywhere. Just overall, it will not, it will not look polished. There are a few exceptions. For example, if you need to have a triangle shape, of course, it's completely okay to have three vertex per face. This is also the same for any other shape, such as a hexagon, to have more than four vertices. However, as a general rule, you want to try and have four vertices per face. Okay, so I am in object mode, and I'm just going to show you guys uh, the most common tools and techniques that you'll use in modeling. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our shape. I'm going to click Shift A to go to Mesh, and I'm going to add a cylinder. 
left click our cylinder and now we have one in the viewport. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is called in setting. First we're going to click tab to go into edit mode. If you're not able to make sure to have your object selected. We want to make sure we're in a face select and we're going to click this top face on top of our cylinder. I'm now going to click I and make sure to have your mouse far away from your object so that it gives you enough room to adjust your inset. I will now click I and I'm going to move my mouse towards the object to create this shape. What insetting essentially does is it takes the original face, copies the face and creates edges on the vertices to link everything up. The next method I'm going to show you is called extruding. We're going to click on our smaller face in the center. We're then going to click E. And what this does is it takes our face and essentially stretches it out. So as you can see, it rises up and is automatically locked onto the Z axis for us. The next thing we want to do is copy this flat surface. And we want to do this whilst maintaining our cylinder in the center. So how do we do this? Well, let's see what scaling does. As you can see, it maintains this flat surface, but it also widens our cylinder, which is not what we want. We want to keep our cylinder the same. You might be thinking, oh, well, maybe we can just extrude. Again, this doesn't work because it takes the original shape and just elongates it. What we need to do is copy the vertices by clicking extrude. Now I'm going to right click to cancel our movement. Then instead of scaling the original points, we have some duplicated points already linked to our cylinder. And therefore we can scale these out without affecting our original cylinder. Now we want to make sure it's roughly the same length as our cylinder underneath. What we can do is use different viewpoints to help us guide us along. So what I'm going to do is use the top viewpoint, maybe the bottom instead. Now what we can do is scale our original points like before until they line up with our other points. You can also hold down shift to slow down the movement of our points. Once they are aligned, left click to confirm. And then middle bars to move around. Now, as you can see, we have our flat surface. Now we need our elongated parts. And you know, if we want to make something longer and stretch it out, we will use our extrude key. We also want to make sure that it's roughly the same length as our bottom part. So we'll use a different view to estimate roughly where our part is. We're going to click E to extrude. And if you look at, at the top, we roughly have one square and two square spaces. However, the length of our cylinder is not exactly square lengths. What we need to do is move our component so that it is in line with our grid. So let's left click and select all of our components and let's get into the right view, either left or right. We're going to click G and we're going to move it on the Z axis as we want it to go up and down. Now what's going on here? 
it's it sort of looks like it's extruding our parts. Well, what's happened here is that we have vertices which are colored black that haven't been selected, which is now allowing us to essentially stretch our mesh using these other points, like what we did for the top of our cylinder a little while ago. But if you look, you can't, you can't really see them. Well, in this case, our vertices are overlapping each other and they're practically impossible to get in this view. So what we need to do is we're going to come up to here and we've got a shading viewport here. It's called wireframe. We're going to click on it. And it's very subtle. But if we look, we have black fading here. If everything was selected, we should actually have orange fading or full highlights. If you cannot see what I can see, also make sure show overlays is on. What now we need to do is hold down shift and we're going to left drag over everything. And that is going to select and add any not previously selected vertices to our selection. What we can now do is go back to our solid mode viewport shading. We're going to go into one of our side views, click G and Z to grab our mesh and we're going to move it on the z-axis holding our shift if you want to do it slowly and we're going to line it up with the grid to the best of our ability the next thing we are going to do is go back into face select mode and we want to create this original shape up here but down here so what we need to do is select our faces We're then going to go into one of our side viewports. You can hold down shift and middle mouse button to move your view. And we want it two squares long. We're going to click E to extrude because we want to elongate it. And we also have it locked onto the Z axis. We're then going to move this down until it matches on our grid left click to confirm our selection as you can see we have practically duplicated our part let's say we are happy with our object it sort of looks like a dumbbell <laughs> the next thing we are going to do is add some detail to our model the amount of detail is going to depend on the use case of your object. If it's something far in the distance, we can use less detail. If it's something close up, you want more detail. Overall, the more detail you have, the crisper, the object and textures and everything is going to look. In order to add some detail, we're going to come down to our modifiers properties tab going to go to add modifier and we're going to click on subdivision surface make sure to have your object selected that you want to add your modifier to so I'm going to click tab and as you can see it's almost like this subdivision modifier has just made everything way worse it's got these weird jagged sharp edges and it's lost a lot of its shape. The first thing we are going to do in object mode is we're going to right click on our object and we're going to click shade smooth. As you can see, it basically shade smooth your object. It's gotten rid of quite a lot of the jagged edges and, and sharp areas. If you want to go back to the original look, 
you can click shade flat and it will bring you back. But we're going to stick with shade smooth. Let's have a look at our subdivision modifier over here. So over here we have levels, viewport and render. What this means is that the higher the number, as you can see, the more subdivisions will be performed. The more subdivisions you have, the more faces you'll have, therefore the more detail you'll have and the smoother the object. So if I click on it, if we have a look at the outline, it's a very a jagged. And just overall, the mesh doesn't look smooth and it's got sharp areas. We can bump this up. And as you can see, it's actually worse in some areas, but it's made the jagged outline more smooth. And as you increase this, the smoother the outline will get. You want to find something that is appropriate for its use. So if at the moment, I'm going to knock it down to a 2. And in your final render, when you render something, if you actually want it to look more like 3 in your render, you're going to bump it up in 3 in the render section, not the viewport. The viewport is just what you see. If you're having performance issues, you can always just knock this down. I'm going to keep it at 2 for now. If you don't want the shape of your object to be affected by the subdivision modifier, you can click simple and it will return it to its original shape. However, we're going to go back to Catmull Clark. Okay, so now we have the subdivision modifier. Why has it made these stretches? If we go into edit mode and we go to vertices, what it essentially does is it calculates the center points of the faces and averages it out over the edge. The longer the face, the more stretching it has to do to create this roundedness. If the face has been stressed too much, you will get these imperfections here. Now it's all very well knowing that, but how do we fix this? This is where our next tool comes in, and it's called Loop Cuts. What a Loop Cut does is it will create edges that will loop around the object. So in order to make the faces smaller, what we need to do is create edges so that it creates a smaller face around where the edge is being calculated in order to remove these imperfections. So in edit mode, we're going to click Control R. And it's going to create this yellow edge. You can increase the amount of edges you want by using the mouse wheel. And you can also decrease the amount. We're going to right click to get one. And now what you can do is move your edge. You can move your edges on the object. So we're going to move ours up. And we want to get it relatively close, but you never want it completely linked up. We're then going to left click to confirm our position. I'm also going to do one for down below here. If we come out of object mode, as you can see, it's a lot better, but we still have some lumps going on. Again, in order to fix this, we need to reduce this face amount to prevent stretching on this face. What you can try is Control R. However, as you can see, it's not really working. You've got one here, which you can add another one if you wanted to. And that actually works pretty well. However, you can still see it a little bit. However, what I'm actually going to do is we're going to use the inset function. So we're going to go to faces mode, select this top face, and we're just going to click I. And we're just going to make it a bit smaller. Or you can have it wider. You basically want to treat this as if it's an edge loop. 
So I'm going to have it pretty close. I'm going to confirm it into edit mode. And voila, look at that. No bumps and you've got smooth edges. Looks very nice. Another thing that edge loops are really good at is they're almost like a tightening. What I mean by that is if we look at our tube in the middle, we have one that is quite thin and as it goes up, it expands out. If this is the one you look, you can of course totally have this. However, what if you want it a bit thinner? Well, again, you can use edge loops to tighten up any stretching. Again, don't forget that the subdivision works by calculating the average distance. And we can shorten that distance by adding edge, edge loops as they will create new faces. And as you can see, it's now a lot thinner. Another thing to note is that you never really want your edge loops 100% next or overlapping other edges. If I move it closer, this is as far as it will go. As you can see, it's made all this weird sort of shading. There's like black bits, etc. We don't want this. It's going to mess with the lighting and your shading when you come to texturing. If you do put edge loops and you're not comfortable with where they are, you want to move them, you can click double G whilst you have your edge loops selected and now you can readjust them. So I recommend something close but not overlapping or not too close. As you can see, it's a much better result. Something to note is that you can also use GG to move faces and vertices how you want. As an example, let's say I wanted this point, this vertice here, halfway down. We'll just click GG and you can move it Okay, so I have gone into object mode. You can do that up here. And we're going to move our dumbbell looking thing out of the way for the moment. You can just click H to hide it if you want. And you can click Alt H to unhide it. Or if you have it hidden and you can't remember the shortcuts, you can click on the I in your, in your collections tab to adjust it. We're going to add a cube. We're going to select our cube and go into edit mode. The next thing I'm going to show you is called beveling. The benefits of beveling is that you can create an arch. In order to do this, we're going to go into edge select mode. We're going to click on the edge that we want to bevel. We're then going to click control B. And we're going to adjust it using our mouse. By pulling away, you'll increase the bevel. Coming closer, you come back closer to the original point. You can also use the mouse wheel to add more bevels. So as you can see, now there's two faces, three faces, and it just continues depending on how much bevel you want. So you could have a full bevel as such, or you could have it slightly beveled. I'm just going to stick with one bevel for now, like so. Left click to confirm. Now that we have our little word cube, let's say we wanted to do something a bit more complicated. Let's say we wanted to delete half of this face. What you can do is we can use loop cuts to separate this face and then we can leave the bottom delete the bottom half. So we'll do control R and as you can see it's not letting me do that. I'm not entirely sure why. 
I think it's because of the five vertices. However, I could be wrong. In order to solve this, we're just going to put our edge here. And you might be thinking, well, how's that going to help us? Well, what we can do is we can go into a vertex mode and I'm going to use left click to select this vertice and shift left click to select this vertice. Now they are both selected. We're then going to click J to join. And as you can see, what it's now done is it's put a edge in between and linked our two vertices. And that now allows us to go to face mode and we can delete this face. So we're going to hit delete. And as you can see, we have different things. We have this limited dissolve, delete only edges, only faces, faces, edges, vertices, dissolve, loads of different options. The one that we want is going to be delete only faces. And as you can see, it has removed that face and now we have a little gap in between. Pretty cool. Let's move to the back. And as you can see, we also have this edge. You might be thinking, well, we don't need this edge anymore, so let's just get rid of it. So what we're going to do is select it, click delete on our keyboard. And you might be thinking, oh, let's just do delete edges, right? Because we want to delete the edge. Well, unfortunately, when you do that, it deletes the faces that are connected with it. And that's not what we want. We just want to delete that edge. So we're going to do Control Z to go one step back. We're going to click delete again, but this is where we're going to use dissolve. So we use dissolve edges. And as you can see, it's now got rid of that edge and it's maintained the face at the back, which is exactly what we want. Let's now say, ah, uh, you know what? I don't like that there's a little hole here. I want to get that face back. In order to do this, we're going to use another tool. First, you need to be in a vertex mode. We're going to left and shift click every vertice that surrounds the face that we want. So we want a rectangle. So we want each point. We're then going to click F and that's short for fill. And as you can see, it has now put that face back. And again, we could go to edge mode, get this edge, dissolve edge, because we don't want that. We don't need that anymore. You could if you wanted to, in order to maintain the four vertices. But you don't, you don't necessarily have to. Some of you may be thinking, well, this is great, but if I wanted to just adjust a gun or maybe change the map, well, how would I do this? I'm not just going to model everything and just recreate everything. What's it's going to take forever? Well, thankfully, we don't have to do that. It's really just as simple as loading up your map and your AGR, going into edit mode, once you have selected your object, and just changing stuff. For example, let's say we just wanted to make this wall bigger. We could just G and Y, and we could just bring it out. You would have a floating wall. But now that we've learned how to extrude stuff, we could just extrude it, and now we have a stick in our wall. And that's exact, essentially how you would change the map. Of course, you would have to retexture things. This is also the same for any gun model. If I go back into object mode, and I select our gun,
we can now use middle mouse to come out with a camera view. And as you can see, you have all your vertices, edges and faces. Let's say for some reason, you wanted these faces bigger. You just wanted this sticking out more. You would just select them all and you could just extrude it out. And now you have an extruded part of the gun. We'd go back into object mode. And as you can see, the part that we had just edited is now sticking out. And that's how you would change the gun models. Another thing you could do, let's say you see this plant and you want it somewhere else. In object mode, you're just going to select it, click G, and you could move it. Let's say you want it up here. There you go, left click to confirm it. And now you have a plant on top of this wall. And you could do this with anything on the map. You can move it around, rotate it, rotate it, scale it, extrude it, cut it, do whatever you want. Really, the sky's the limit. In terms of editing, I'm going to leave you with one last secret. Let's say we select this wall and we go into edit mode. I'm going to go to vertices. And as you can see, the wall is made up of tries. So we have one vertice, two vertices, three vertices per face. Now, whilst I believe this is required for video game purposes, if you're having issues with textures, it might be because there's too many tries in the object. Now, instead of doing all of that manually, we can click F3. It allows us to search for all the tools that we can use. And we're going to type in tries to quads. We're going to give that a click. And as you can see, it's changed all the tries that we had to quads automatically. Honestly, saving you lots and lots of time. One final thing I would like to share. It's all very well me making this tutorial and showing you how to model. But of course, modeling can take years to get really good at. And the more complex stuff you want to make, of course, the better you have to be. This is also not just limited to modeling. For example, you can create sand environments without modeling. You can use modifiers and different stuff like that. The type of modeling that I showed you is box modeling. And it's good for making props and like spaceships and stuff like that. If you have something specific you want to make, I highly recommend using Google or YouTube. You could relatively find anything on there and they'll show you how to model it. However, I understand that you, maybe you don't want to spend years getting good at modeling and looking up all these YouTube videos. So I have one final solution for you. And that is to get your props and assets online. There are various different types of websites you can try. You have websites like CG Trader, Render Hub, Sketchfab, Polygon, that you can download models and props from. You also have places like Mixamo, who also do character models. The websites that I've just listed are either free or at least have some free resources on there for you. However, it's always good to just search online and check what you can get for free. Make sure you check the license that comes with them as some are only available for personal use and if you want to put stuff on YouTube you may need to consider getting a commercial license. Again depending on the website and who has put up the resources you may get a commercial license for free. In terms of getting these props into your Blender file and your scene all you need to do is download it in a file format that 
can be read by Blender, such as FBX. Put it in a folder that you know where it is, probably ideally with your project folder. Name it well so you can find it. And then just import it by using File, Import, and FBX. Once you have imported it, you can just grab it and move it around like you would normally in object mode. That's all I have for you guys. Leave your comments and feedback down below. I hope you found it helpful. If you want any more help, feel free to join our Discord. Thank you for watching and see ya.